。ありがとうございました。続いて、ブリンケン米国国務長官からご発言いただきます。よろしくお願いいたします。It is a particular pleasure for me to be with these colleagues and these friends.、Uh, Yoko, to you,、uh, to the government of Japan, thank you. Not only for the hospitality for organizing us, but for your leadership.、Uh, and、uh, to my good friends,、uh, the foreign minister from Australia, <coughs> Mr. Wong,、uh, external affairs minister from India, Shankar,、um, thank you for the quality of the conversation and the work that we're doing together, not only today, but virtually every day.、Um, if、uh, my colleagues will indulge me for just one minute, I want to speak quickly to the elections that just took place in Venezuela. We applaud the Venezuelan people for their participation in the July 28th presidential election. We commend their courage and commitment to democracy in the face of repression and in the face of adversity. We've seen the announcement just a short while ago by the Venezuelan Electoral Commission. We have serious concerns that the result announced does not reflect the will or the votes of the Venezuelan people. It's critical that every vote be counted fairly and transparently, that election officials immediately share information with the opposition and independent observers without delay, and that the electoral authorities publish the detailed tabulation of votes. The international community is watching this very closely and will respond accordingly. Now, to the business of today. Uh, this is in the category of everything's been said, but not everyone has said it. So I suspect this will sound familiar because of、uh, the very eloquent presentations that my colleagues have made. But let me just reinforce some of the things that they've said. This is a moment of unprecedented strategic alignment among our four countries. We have four countries that are united by a shared vision, who are free and open, connected, secure, a prosperous, resilient Indo Pacific region. That means, simply put, that problems are dealt with openly, rules are reached transparently, applied fairly, that goods, that ideas, that people will flow freely and lawfully across land, across cyberspace, the open seas. And we're also united by a shared belief that together we can help shape this future in ways that bring tangible benefit to the people we represent and many other people throughout the region. Now, our four countries are home to nearly 2 billion people. We have a combined GDP of nearly $35 trillion. We're responsible for about 30% of the global foreign direct investment stock. We are committed to putting our collective resources, our collective strengths to work to benefit people across the region that we share. Just over the past several years, the Quad has launched and delivered on. Ambitious but also very practical things in our agenda. One that respects the centrality of ASEAN, the leadership of ASEAN, the Pacific Islands Forum, the Indian Ocean Rim Association, and other regional bodies. And it complements the growing network of interconnected alliances and partners within the Asia Pit Indo Pacific that are increasingly as well linked to other regions. Today we discuss concrete steps to advance this cooperative agenda. First, we are charting a course for a more secure and open Indo Pacific and Indian Ocean region by bolstering maritime security and domain awareness. In practical terms, what does this mean? It means strengthening the capacity of partners across the region to know what's happening in their own waters. Two years ago, we launched the Indo Pacific Partnership for Maritime Domain Awareness, bringing cutting edge technology like signal location data and satellite technology to countries all across the region. These capabilities, for example, help countries crack down on illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing. They help them predict natural disasters. They help them mitigate the effects of climate change. They help them enforce borders. And we agreed to extend this partnership to the Indian Ocean via India's Information Fusion Center. We continue to work with partners to ensure that freedom of navigation, overflight, the unimpeded flow of lawful maritime commerce, that these continue to go forward. They are critical to the region's security. They're critical to its ongoing prosperity. Second, we are helping to accelerate the Indo Pacific's path to even greater prosperity by harnessing the power of digital and emerging technologies, and again, doing it together. Today, we took the first step to launching the AI Engage program、uh, 
funding opportunities for collaborative research to leverage these technologies, like artificial intelligence, like robotics, to help improve things like agricultural productivity, food security, things that matter profoundly to so many of our people. We're growing the region's tech ecosystem through the Quad Investors Network. It's bringing together investors, corporations, public institutions <laughs> for joint ventures in things like clean energy, chips, critical minerals, uh, quantum technology. We're also bolstering security and resilience, as you've heard, of the undersea cables that connect all of us. <clears throat> Upward of 95% of digital traffic is carried by these cables every single millisecond of the day. So far, we've trained over 1,000 telecom professionals across Southeast Asia, South Asia, the Pacific Islands, on manufacturing, on delivery, on the maintenance of cable infrastructure. This week, we announced a new co cohort of Quad Fellows. We are, we're sponsoring top STEM students, those who have masters or PhDs, to come study in the United States. Uh, we just expanded uh, from Quad countries to include students from all across Southeast Asia. Third, we're deepening our collaboration on humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. This cooperation laid the groundwork to send uh, some $5 million to, the, uh, to Papua New Guinea after the landslides this spring. We're working to finalize a response mechanism to make coordination even more effective and immediate uh, to deal with future disasters. Of course, in the context of our discussions today, uh, we also talked about regional and global security priorities where quad engagement and leadership makes a big difference. Our collective resources, our strategic thinking, our relationships, our consultations, all of these are important to address the challenges. The DPRK is destabilizing and unlawful missile launches, Russia's ongoing war of aggression against Ukraine, and of course, the conflict in the Middle East, uh, the war in Gaza. We're grateful, uh, I must say, on the part of the United States, grateful to our partner for the strong support for the ceasefire proposal that President Biden put forward, and uh, we're working every single day to bring that across the finish line. Uh, when our leaders were gathered at the G7 in Hiroshima uh, in May of 2023, President Biden predicted that a generation from now, people will look at the Quad as a force that, as he put it, changed the dynamic not only of the region, but of the world. Today's meeting, all of the energy, all of the commitment, all of the collaboration that we're able to bring together gives me great confidence in the Quad's future and the shared future that we work to represent. Thank you.